Welcome back to State of the Union. I'm Dana Bash. Some Senate Republicans are counting and countering President Joe Biden's trillion dollar plan, and, uh, his actually two trillion dollar infrastructure plan with one of their own, a sliver of the size, and it is only six hundred billion dollars, focusing primarily on transportation like roads and bridges with other areas like broadband, Internet and drinking water. They're calling it a starting point. Joining me now is a Republican leading the effort on the counteroffer, Senator Shelley Moore Capito of West Virginia. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Senator, you unveiled your own $600 billion infrastructure bill, a number you've called a good starting point. But President Biden is pushing for a $2.3 trillion bill. So if this is all about bipartisan compromise, are you willing to go over a trillion dollars to meet Democrats in the middle? Well, I think we have to look at uh, the comparison of the two plans. Uh, we really narrowed the focus on infrastructure to really look at physical infrastructure, roads, bridges, rail, airports, water systems. The president's bill of two two point two trillion goes you know far afield from that. So where I think the first starting point we need to have is let's do an apples to apples comparison of the physical infrastructure, core infrastructure part of his plan, or how it matches up with what we put forward. Uh, the president asked for our plan, and and we th we thought it was really important to put a marker in to show what we thought was important, what's going to mm -hmm. be the job creating infrastructure plan, and how much it would be. So I th I think. I think we're at a really, uh, and all indications are, it's time to really start putting the pencils to the paper. So just to uh, follow up on that, if the apples to apples match and, and you come to an agreement, you mm -hmm. are open to uh, a, a midway point just on the money. Well, we're open to looking at these all these different areas as long as it's paid for. As long we've always done this bipartisan, this physical infrastructure piece, and there's no reason we shouldn't be able to get to an agreed amount at this point. I don't know where that is right now, but at least we're talking, and we're starting to talk, and we've gotten some good signals back that this is the direction the White House and others want to go. You've said that infrastructure should be fully paid for, but you also say increasing the corporate tax rate is a non-negotiable red line. So would any tax hike be acceptable to you? Where I think it's important for folks to know how we've paid for uh, the ideas we have on the table, we've got, of course, the gas uh, tax, which is the trust fund, which is a declining resource. We also have user fees. We have folks using our roads and bridges and other infrastructure that aren't really paying in for the maintenance and use of those highways. That would be electric vehicles or hydrogen or some hybrids. So we build that into the formula. I think, too, an idea that we need to look at is to look at the COVID dollars that have already already been uh, appropriated and, and move that towards infrastructure. Let our cities and towns use that money for roads and bridges for their uh, match. Uh, so I think we've got some really good ideas that doesn't that don't incorporate raising any taxes, but simply looks at the users and the consumers of infrastructure and says, let's pay with this uh, with dollars that we generate from those those uh, entities. Have you heard from the White House since you released your plan? Sure. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Very uh, encouraging signs. I saw what uh, Jen Psaki said uh, on her in her comments, and I've talked with others. And uh, we are circling back on Monday to uh, figure out the best strategies forward. I've talked to our ranking members. I've talked to my committee chairman. I've talked to Democrats. Uh, this is an active conversation, and, and I think that it's a good beginning. You've said that you expect climate change to be part of these infrastructure negotiations. You're a Republican mm -hmm. who believes the climate crisis is real, and you say that you want to be part of the solution. President Biden is proposing $174 billion for electric cars in his plan. Are you open to that? Well, the last highway bill that we passed, which is one of the one of the anchors of this plan, does have uh, infrastructure in there for electric charging stations and innovations around electric vehicles. Where I differ from the president is I don't think we need one hundred and sixty billion dollars to incent people to buy electric vehicles. I don't think that we should be building the charging stations throughout this country when private private entities are going to be bet the beneficiaries of having charging stations at their different stopping points along the highways, and I think they should play a part here. So I think that's where we really start to really separate on EVs. I'm all about 
uh, moving forward with the technology and creating a, a, an electric vehicle economy. That's fine. But let's let the private sector participate in that. That's where I think uh, has the best uh, the best possibilities of really making the most out of our not just private dollars, but public dollars as well. I want to turn to the issue of police reform. Your fellow Republican, Senator yes. Tim Scott, proposed a compromise on so-called qualified immunity that would allow individuals to sue police departments, but not individual police officers. Do you support that? Well, I definitely support Senator Scott's efforts. I was on the Justice Act that got caught up in politics in the in the fall. Uh, I think he has redoubled his efforts and is working across the aisle. Uh, I think the time is now. I think there's a real, uh, a real, and it's probably past due, but a real want to get this done, and I think to get it done right. But we've got to make sure that uh, we are still recruiting in and, and have the possibilities of having what is a core, I think, function of our uh, of our uh, our government, which is a, a law enforcement that protects us. A qualified immunity is a, is a definitely a hot button issue. I think the way that uh, Senator Scott has formulated uh, some revisions to uh, qualified immunity is is on the table right now. I, I know he's in active negotiations on this piece, and I know that's a big piece of this. And do you like what he, what you've heard about it? Yeah, I mean, I like what Senator Scott's put forward. I think other things that we had in in the Justice Act would eliminates chokeholds. It 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 uh, makes mm -hmm. a registry so that you're not passing bad cop to bad cop. I mean, there's a lot of really good things in there that I think are going to be the core of any kind of justice bill that we pass. I know mm -hmm. there's different ideas. Uh, there's the George Floyd Act and others. So we'll be looking at that to try to find uh, ways to move forward. I want to ask about vaccine hesitancy, Senator. Polls show almost half of Republicans don't want to get a vaccine. I want you to listen to your fellow Republican, Senator Ron Johnson, and what he said about getting vaccinated. If you have a vaccine, quite honestly, what do you care if your neighbor has one or not? I mean, what, what is it to you? you you've got a vaccine, and it's, you know, science is tell, telling you it's very, very effective. So what, why is this big push to make sure everybody gets a vaccine and he went on to say he's, quote, highly suspicious of what's happening here. Do comments like that hurt your push for Americans to get vaccinated, especially hesitant Republicans? Well, I definitely think that comments like that hurt. I believe that we should all have confidence that we should to not just protect ourselves, but our communities and our neighbors. We should get vaccinated. Uh, and, and I wouldn't say that only Republicans have hesitancy. I think that there are some folks that uh, are unsure. And, you know, when we saw what happened over the last week with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that, that really sort of chills uh, people that were maybe waiting. So, mm -hmm. no, I disagree with my fellow senator. I think we ought to move forward. West Virginia's done a great job in this area, but we're starting to find that we have more vaccine than we do have people who are willing to step forward. So yeah. I'm trying to do whatever I can to say it's safe, it's reliable, and it's really about you and your neighbor. And, and that's what we need to take into consideration. Speaking of fellow Republicans, another one, uh, Liz Cheney, was under fire, you remember, for voting to impeach President Trump. There's a New York mm -hmm. Times report that some of her male GOP colleagues made what some women in the room considered sexist attacks. One compared it to when you, quote, look up into the stands and see your girlfriend on the opposition's side. As a Republican woman yourself, when you heard about that, what did you think? Well, I can tell you what, that Liz Cheney is one strong woman, and uh, I, I think she has a, a, a terrific uh, uh, insight and great strong backbone. So I don't think any, any, any comment like that could even touch her in terms of if offending her. I mean, people have to just stop with the uh, casual comments that are hurting, that they don't realize the ramifications of it. I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like as a woman leader, I'm going to be just as strong as a man. And whatever whatever the side comments are, I just don't pay attention to them. We've just got to keep moving forward here. Uh, last question. You called President Trump's actions yeah. during the January 6th insurrection disgraceful. And you said history will judge him harshly. Would you support the former president if he runs again in 2024? Well, I think that's a really premature question, and I think January 6th still is very vivid in, in many of us uh, who were 
at the Capitol that day in our minds as a as a very sad day for our country. Uh, the Republican Party is strong. We got a lot of folks who are not just looking to lead in 2022, but into 2024. So we'll see. I, I hope that President Trump plays a role. I don't know whether he'll run or not, but uh, you know we can sort that out as time goes on. Thank you. Okay, Senator Shelley Moore Capito, Republican of West Virginia, appreciate it.